Cruise News time. Well, hopefully you saw my little short news story yesterday while I was on the road, but I don't feel like one minute was enough time to really take in the awesomeness of yesterday's cruise news. So let's talk about the new CDC guidance for vaccinated people on cruise ships and what it may mean going forward. And, and I do have a little bit of an update for the Florida Sues to Cruise story, uh, the federal lawsuit going on between Florida, Alaska, Texas uh, versus the CDC. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome back to La Lita Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news updates. Well, it's Thursday. It's an interesting week in cruising. Uh, and yeah, I, I did a little practice vlogging yesterday. I, I went on a road trip. I'm calling it uh, land cruising. I went to the world's largest White Castle of all places. And look, I know that if you didn't grow up with White Castle, if you don't have some sort of connection with White Castle, it's perplexing. You don't get it. And uh, for that, I forgive you. I don't hold it against you. Look, there's two kinds of people in this world, people who get White Castle and people who don't. And for the people who don't get White Castle, well, uh, I'll just pray for you and say, bless your heart. How about that? That's a Southern thing. No, just kidding. Had a great time. Make sure you check out that vlog. Uh, good practice for getting back on a cruise ship. But it was while I was on that very land cruise that I got the awesome notification that there'd been some modification to the handbook, to the guidelines that the CDC was putting in place for restricted sailings. Two big updates, two big updates to the COVID-19 operations manual for simulated and restricted voyages under the framework for conditional sail order. I didn't even say it right with all those hand movements. I'll do it again. COVID-19 operations manual for simulated and restricted voyages under the framework for conditional sailing order. This basically is the, is the guidebook for when cruising resumes for both vaccinated and unvaccinated passengers. And the CDC, they made a change in the guidebook specifically for vaccinated passengers. The first big and major change was a change to the mask guidance. If you look at the mask guidance, it talks about mask everywhere on the cruise ship uh, with very minimal opportunities to take it down just for some eating and drinking. Uh, of course, they don't want you to wear a mask in the swimming pool, but they even wanted you to wear a mask in the lounger if you're not vaccinated and now they've come out and said well for vaccinated people you can get naked okay they didn't say you could get naked but they said that you don't have to wear a mask outside that you can participate in group activities outside that you can have extended meals outside if you're outside and you are vaccinated you can uh, take off your mask on the cruise ship and, and this is up to the discretion of the cruise line I like that language, up to the discretion of the cruise line. That kind of concept's gonna come into play when I tell you about what happened in Florida in court yesterday. But this is big. This is big. And the reason that it's big, like this isn't, you know, this isn't everything that we want. We want them to say that if you're vaccinated, you can take the mask off. We want this to say that if there are enough vaccinated people on a cruise ship, nobody has to wear a mask. That's where we want to get to. We're not there yet. But the thing that I like about this guidance is it is following some of the guidance that we're seeing uh, for not cruise ship activities. Uh, this happened a few months ago where they said vaccinated people can hang out together. We're now starting to see conversations around once the vaccination uh, percentage gets to a certain percentage, we may get guidance where you don't have to wear a mask indoors on land. And so if it's a scenario where something happens uh, for the general population, and then like three or four weeks later, a month later, they move that over to the cruise line guidance, that's what we want. We want to see this cruise line guidance following the guidance that they're giving us on land because that's all going to return us to some sort of normalcy. Now, the other big tweak to the operations manual yesterday was under the section here for excursions. And, and it says, again, at the discretion of the cruise line, vaccinated people can self-explore, can self-guide themselves around the cruise port, can go on excursions that aren't uh, cruise-only excursions. Just a real world example. That means possibly if you go to Cozumel, if you're somebody who's vaccinated, maybe you can go to Mr. Sancho's and you're not stuck with the cruise line. 
Now, certainly this guidance isn't the end all be all. This is just the guidance. And so the actual tactical procedures and what's going to happen has to be determined. And this guidance, of course, opens up a whole lot of can of worms. Let me say a few things. First, none of this CDC guidance applies to what's going on with cruising in Asia, Europe, or really the Caribbean. This only applies to cruises that start or terminate in the United States. And so for like my cruise in 30 days, in 30 days, my cruise in 30 days in the Bahamas, none of this matters for that cruise. It's completely up to Royal Caribbean. It's completely up to the Bahamian government and the, and the countries that that cruise will visit, how things go down in funky town. The CDC don't have nothing to say about my cruise in the Bahamas. Now you might say though, that, uh, you know, Royal Caribbean may want to follow some of these guidelines just so that they can show that they are, you know, playing along with what the CDC is doing. And that may make the path easier for cruising in the United States. But technically, technically the CDC, they don't, their, their reach does not extend to these cruises that start and end in the Caribbean or anywhere else in the world. CDC only applies to U.S. cruises. That's important to remember. The second can of worms that this new guidance opens is, well, how do you know who's vaccinated on a cruise ship and not vaccinated on a cruise ship? Well, the easy way to determine that is just to say that everybody on the cruise ship has to be vaccinated. Some cruise lines are doing that. Then it's not hard to determine who's been vaccinated and who's not been vaccinated. Now, some cruise lines, they, they're kind of signaling that they're not going to ask the vaccine status at all. So then you do have to jump through these hoops and go, okay, we got 50 people out on the Lido deck. Uh, none of them have mask on. We don't know if they're vaccinated or not vaccinated. So, you know, should they have mask on? Should we just say that everybody has to wear a mask on the Lido deck because we can't tell who's vaccinated and who's not vaccinated? And then if you're a vaccinated person and you don't want to wear a mask on the Lido deck, then obviously you're going to be look like, I'm vaccinated. I don't want to wear it. I don't know. I was, I've been pondering this on my ride home yesterday from Orlando. And I was like, maybe it could be like, remember when you were young and you tried to get into the clubs and there were some clubs you could get in like when you were 18, but it was like a regular bar. And so people that were over 21, they could drink. And so you had to get like a, one of those fluorescent bands to show that you were old enough to drink. Are they going to put bands on the vaccinated? I don't know. I don't know what the solution is for that. There's still a lot of questions. What about people with antibodies? What about people that had the COVID? What about kids? What about people that can't take it for medical reasons? What about people that just object to the vaccine? What are they going to do with all these people? There's no answers yet. All we can do is take the guidelines. As, and here, let me. All right. Can we get real? Can we get real? In six months, I don't think any of this is going to matter. We are going to get to a place where everybody who wants the vaccine will have gotten the vaccine. And then we have to look at that number and say, well, is this number enough to get to herd immunity, whatever herd immunity is? And then if the answer is no, we have to answer the hard question, how are we going to live with this virus? Because unless we get to herd immunity, we're not going to get rid of this virus. It's going to be with us forever like other viruses. And so we have to adjust our lives uh, to living with this virus. Personally, I believe in six months, this will all be normalized. There'll be a good understanding of who might get sick and what to do when people get sick and, and we'll adjust our lives from there. Honestly, when it comes to cruising, and I know all of us try to elevate ourselves beyond our own selfish desires into some benevolent community mindset, but at the end of the day, this is what I believe. When we go and pay thousands of dollars to get on a cruise, the, the main thing that, that we want is that for that cruise not to be disrupted. We want to have a good time and we don't want that cruise to get disrupted because somebody got sick. Now, if the cruise lines come up with a scenario where if somebody gets sick, it doesn't affect my day, then that's what I want to get to. And so I do believe this is where we will get to in life. I do believe this is where we will get to in the cruise space where like so many other things that we deal with, where people get sick, uh, as long as it doesn't affect us, how selfish does that sound? As long as it doesn't affect us, then we're okay. I think transactionally, that's where we're trying to get to in life, in the cruise space, where uh, we can live with this virus, where we can, uh, you know, we don't want to even... I, Certainly, we don't want anybody to get sick and die from COVID, right? And uh, I've said it before, financially, uh, if you want to say that capitalism is king and that these businesses are just working in their own self-interest to make a lot of profit, I say embrace that. It's good for the consumer. I hope the cruise lines are motivated by profit. I hope that every executive there wants to be a billionaire because the way they get there is keeping people 
not sick on cruise ships. If you have a bunch of people sick on cruise ships, dying on cruise ships like Diamond Princess, they're not going to make any profit. The business is going to shut down. They want cruises to go off without disruption, and they want to be able to take care of people when they get sick, and they want to make sure that those people don't die. And this is the paramount priority of the cruise lines right now to protect their money. Look, this is all going to work out. We're through the worst part of it. This is the easy part. It's going to be a slow restart. It's going to be a very restrictive restart. It might be uh, only for people that are vaccinated, which I know will uh, be upsetting to 20 or 30% of the people. But uh, yeah, give it six months and uh, again, this will just be a speed bump. All right, let me talk about the lawsuit in Florida. Let me tell you what I know. But before I get there, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. And this would be a great time to hit the like button. I dare you. Thanks in advance. Okay, so in a federal court in Tampa, Florida yesterday, the state of Florida, the state of Alaska, the state of Texas all came together in their lawsuit against the CDC and the federal government. Uh, there has been some information coming out of that. The big takeaway is the judge heard everything and he will be making a ruling on the injunction as soon as possible. That was the timeline that was given. Basically, the way I understand the arguments went, it was like this. Uh, Florida, Texas, Alaska said, look, we're, we're, we're losing money because of no tourism. We feel like the CDC is overreaching. They haven't given us a good timeline for when cruising can start. And uh, we think that you should step in and do something, Mr. Judge Man. And then the CDC said, look, we're trying to keep people safe. We've, we've put this uh, conditional sale order in place. And now we've given the cruise lines everything that they need to get going again. We've been working with the cruise lines in good faith. And uh, yeah. The states don't have a leg to stand on. What do you think about that? And then the question was asked to the states, well, if not the CDC regulating the safety of, of cruise ships, who's going to do it? And the state said, we suggest that the cruise lines self-regulate, that they take care of it themselves. And uh, th there you go. What do you think about that? Do you think the cruise line should be in charge of their own safety? Look, I'm, uh, I'm kind of fiscally conservative. I, I don't believe in a lot of government oversight. I said it back in October that the conditional sell order that was brokered uh, back in October really introduced a whole lot of new regulation into cruising that wasn't there previous. I wasn't super excited about that. Look, it's an old philosophical debate. Should a private business be able to do what it's going to do in the pursuit of profit? And then when they're found to be bad actors, you know, get a little slap and oversight then? Or should you start out by heavily regulating a business and then trying to get uh, a business for profit to operate inside of those regulations? That is the debate that we're having right now. The states would say that the business should be able to operate. They should be able to self-regulate. And if you see something that's wrong, then step in. Uh, and of course the government's saying, well, you know, we saw what happened with Diamond Princess, which I don't think is a fair thing. We saw what happened with Diamond Princess. So maybe we should regulate and get the uh, cruise lines to meet our regulations. And certainly it doesn't take much of a historical search to see that businesses don't always act appropriately. Even the cruise business, uh, you know, the, the glaring example is cruise lines putting pollutants in protected waters and getting in trouble for that and getting regulated after that. The question is, when it comes to passenger safety, what should be the approach? Should we let the cruise lines, who are kind of experts in the space, uh, take care of customer safety? And then if something goes wrong, maybe regulate it? Or should we have these regulations that cruise lines work themselves into? We're waiting for a judge to say what happens next. I honestly think the judge is going to side with the CDC. I don't know where it's going to go after that. That's the question I will throw over to you. Are you excited about this new guidance for masks and for shore excursions? Do you see this as a path to less restrictive cruising? And then to the second part, should the government be regulating cruising heavily or should uh, should it be the other way around where the, where, where the cruise lines self-regulate when it comes to customer safety? Thank you so much for watching the show today. Hope you enjoyed it. We got a live show in just a couple hours. Make sure you check that out. Or if it's in the future, check out the replay. Again, hit the like button. Tony with La Lida Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Goodbye.